Hey gang, we're back for video number two. That's uh, part two of our series on how to make uh, Pinewood Derby cars using a DIY CNC machine. Okay, so here you can see where we left off in our last video. We took a simple contour. I extruded it. Uh, it's something you could cut on a bandsaw just as easily, but it's sort of a proof of concept. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this guy and talk about how to make something a little more complicated where the true potential of the CNC starts to be demonstrated. Okay, looking down from the top, you can see I still have my 6 by 2 inch envelope. Let's start from there, but instead of starting from 2D and extruding out into 3D, we're going to start from 3D surfaces and then carve them away so that we have a CNC, uh, CNC-able object when we're done. Okay, first off, I'm going to go over here to my um, cube tool. You can see that all the basic solids are contained within. And I want to select ellipsoid, and specifically ellipsoid from center. I've also got snap activated, which will make this easier. So looking down from the top, let's start with our ellipsoid right here in the center. I'm going to make um, the end of the first axis uh, three inches out back to zero, the end of the second axis over here, and then finally we'll keep this thing a little bit squat. So for right now, let's just make it about, say, uh, three quarters of an inch tall. I'm going to let the other half project down beneath zero, but we're going to carve this material away later. Okay, so let's also make uh, wheel wells for our car. I'm going to come over here from, let's see, let's use uh, the left view. So instead of right, I will right click here, set view, and make this left. That's not the one I'm looking for either. I guess front is uh, the one I want because of the way this thing is oriented. I'm going to come back here to make another ellipsoid, again from center, and let's make the center here about one and a half inches in. I'm going to make the ellipsoid, let's see, let's try half an inch on this first axis, and then we'll go straight up half an inch on the other axis, so it'll be a circular profile, and then I'll have the thing penetrate into our surface, maybe uh, all the way there to the center, so I get an object that looks kind of like that. Okay, sounds good. Now, of course, you can you can choose to make these um, variables look however you want. Uh, these are all just off the top of my head. Next up, to keep my alignment looking good, I'll start typing in the word mirror, as in a household mirror, and I'll set up my axis right down the middle so I can reflect that thing to the other side of my shape. Okay, that's looking good. If I select both of these objects while holding shift, I can write down mirror again and then choose a different axis so that now I've got all four of my wheels represented. Okay, now that we have those basic shapes in place, we're going to start carving away. I forgot to do the cockpit, but I'll come back and do that in a second. Uh, to do this, I'm going to establish a vertical plane. Uh, so you can find that under plane and vertical. And I will uh, cut right along the edge of my envelope. So I'm setting up the footprint of this plane from the top and then stretching it out vertically in the perspective view. I need to make sure that the plane is intersecting fully with my little wheels here. So I want to get something that's looking about like that. And then I'll do what's called a Boolean split. All right, so select poly surfaces to split wheel one and wheel two. Hit enter or the right mouse button. And then the cutting surface will be here. So that when I hit enter, delete my cutting surface and these guys here, then I'll get a, a nice little result there. If I want to keep things simple, I can actually delete these two wheels, select the two wheels that I've already modified and mirror them over, but there's another operation I want to do. Uh, for this one, instead of a vertical plane, I'll just create a regular plane on the ground so I can select rectangular. I want to make sure it's definitely bigger than the area I have to cut so there's no confusion. Again, I'll select Boolean split. And I'll pick all three of these surfaces to split and use this as the cutting surface. Delete my extra material. And I've got something that looks like that pretty good. Okay, let's pick these two wheels. We want to mirror those wheels. 
The mirror plane looking down from the top is right here. And then finally for my last operation, at least in regard to this particular topic, is I'll select all of those items and pick a Boolean union, which officially joins them all together so there's no extra uh, geometry. Okay, just for fun, so that we have, oops, remind me later, uh, some versions of both um, creating solid objects but also deleting solid objects from our final form. Why don't we make the cockpit empty as if somebody could sit in it? So I'll pick another ellipsoid from the center. I'm going to look down from the top as I'm defining it and I'll sort of scoot it back, right? So this is going to be our place where our little pine wood um, pilot can sit. Let's call it something like that about yay deep and then I need to pick this up so that it's intersecting the top surface correctly okay let's see how this one looks so to get rid of this instead of a boolean split because in that case I was relating a solid object to a surface here I want a boolean difference where I'm intersecting two solid objects pick the surface to subtract from the surface to subtract width and then now I have a nice little depression there that gives me the equivalent of my cockpit. Pretty good. Okay, so one thing to remember when uh, operating with a CNC machine is that it's simple to create anything that has no undercuts. So if you imagine, for example, in the left view, a bit coming down from the top, it's going to be easy to carve away this hollow. It's going to be easy to carve away all these surfaces as long as they're perfectly vertical or tilted in this direction. Once they start to tilt out, then you run the risk of creating an undercut, which is an area that the bit can no longer accomplish if it can only move in three axes. Now, fancier tables, of course, they, uh, you can rotate the stock, or um, if you look at those, uh, those robots that uh, work on car assembly, they can move a robotic arm all the way around a piece of material to accomplish all of those approaches. In this case, we're not doing anything so fancy. So here, we'll create the basic shape, and then have you come back with something as simple as a bandsaw or handsaw, to create these little notches that'll um, that'll come underneath the uh, the car itself. All right, so that's the end of part two.